Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Good Shepherd Church this morning. It is so wonderful to see all of you here this morning. Um, I just have uh, one announcement. Our Thanksgiving food drive is coming up. Yes, we have entered the month of October. And I cannot believe that there are two months left in the year. Um, and yes, we're still having uh, the Thanksgiving food drive. Uh, there are flyers that are at the back, uh, at the entrance to the sanctuary that look like this. You may take one on your way out if you did not receive one when you came in. Um, the due date to bring the items in can be any Sunday from now until November 15th, or you may call our church office if you want to drop off midweek. Um, per our re-entry guidelines, uh, I strongly encourage you to call Diane first. She is here on Tuesdays and Thursdays typically. So just call her and let her know um, when you are coming to drop off, the day and the time. That way she's aware um, and she can make preparations accordingly. Um, this is, continues to be a crazy time, but uh, we are grateful to God. The Spirit of God is always with us, always goes with us. Uh, and surrounds us as we live, move, and have our being in God. So let us welcome, welcome to worship this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Friends, we serve a God who designed us for community. Come, um, let us worship together. We serve a God who doesn't ask us to go alone. Come, um, let us sing together. We're loved by a God who chooses to be with us. Come, um, let us walk together. We invite you to continue standing as we sing our first worship song together. Come, Christians, join and sing. Amen. 
I invite you to stand again if you're able as we sing the spirit of the living God. And we'll sing this through three times.
was no one to record the message every week for those at home who can't worship with us, if there was no one to play music, if there was no one to lead people in worship and prayer, I would literally be talking to myself every single second, right? Which is no problem, okay? Um, we need each other in the body of Christ in order to shine the light of Jesus, no matter how you show up, okay? Um, and putting all of us together in order to shine for Jesus is so much better than just one of us. And it's the same way with cooking. Having just one ingredient, like putting the sugar in, isn't going to do it. Put sugar in the oven and what's it going to be burnt? Um, but you put all the ingredients together and they make delicious cookies. Yes. So I have to say So I have um, for our kids, for our Angela and Sadat. What? If you <laughs> The girls were excited. 
excited and my husband and I were excited and then the moving day arrived. As a family, we created a strategy to move all the contents from our old house to our new house within about 10 hours. We started with the big items first, the beds and the sofas, recliners, dressers, and the dining room table. And we loaded them into the moving van and then we unloaded them in the new house. Then we went back and we got the pack boxes and smaller items. As y'all can imagine, the next day we were bone tired and our muscles were sore. But we all realized that we would have never been able to move so quickly if we left the strategy or action of moving to one person in our family. The move into our new home took all of us, even the dog. <laughs> We had to become greater than me for us to accomplish our goal of moving. This, sun, this Sunday, we began our October sermon series titled Greater Than, looking at how the Spirit of God worked through the global community of believers to witness to the power of God rather than just one person. Now, Acts 2 is read every year on Pentecost, the day in which we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit onto believers of every tribe and culture and ethnicity and nation. This morning, we hear a few verses from Acts 2 uh, read on this World Communion Sunday, a day where we celebrate Jesus' sacred meal of love and forgiveness and reconciliation for all people as we remember other followers of Jesus around the world. The Holy Spirit's arrival, according to Scripture, was not a nice, calm scene. The Holy Spirit's arrival was terrible and loud and amazing and scary and awe-inspiring. And the people observing had two responses. Some leaned in with curiosity, asking the question, what does this mean? While others judged the Spirit's activity, saying, they're filled with new wine. It was the Apostle Peter, yes, you heard that right, the Peter who denied Jesus three times, the Peter who was filled with fear when they arrested Jesus, the Peter who cut off the ear of one of the Roman soldiers who arrested Jesus. It was that Peter who arrested the people watching with his testimony, testimony saying this, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only 9 o'clock in the morning. No, this is what the, has been spoken through the prophet Joel. Then the apostle Peter recalls the words of Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, about the events that will take place when the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day happens. There are six things that, that Peter says. The first thing is that the Spirit of God will come on all people, not just one person. The second thing is that men and women will prophesy. The third thing is that the young will see visions and the old will dream dreams. The fourth thing is that even lower classes of people, men and women, will be filled with the Spirit and prophesy. The fifth thing is that there will be blood and fire and smoke in the earth, a whole lot of chaos. And the last thing is that the sun will turn dark and the moon to blood. The Apostle Peter makes it clear that all, to all living in Jerusalem that the Holy Spirit's arrival is not for one person or one group or one people or one nationality or one socioeconomic class or one gender, and it won't be nice and calm. The Spirit's arrival affirms a global community of believers of all races and ages and nations and tribes and ethnicities and genders, and the Spirit's arrival disrupts everything we have ever known and seen about how God works. Hello, 2020. The Spirit's arrival may begin with me, but must always bless the we. Our world's motto, it seems, is me is greater than we. Our addiction to human beings, our addiction as human beings and as a nation to the drug of me is always on full display. Our addiction to preserving our rights and comforts was on full display earlier this year when the pandemic hit, and people got so angry that gyms and restaurants had to shut down for the safety of the public. 
Our addiction to preserving our personal rights and comforts was on full display earlier this year when angry citizens stormed the steps of state legislatures with guns to protest quarantining and wearing masks. Our addiction to preserving our personal rights and comforts was and is still on full display whenever we encounter or hear about a person who refuses to wear a mask to attend worship, to go to the store, or to go into a restaurant. On a grand scale, we sadly witnessed the addiction to the drug of me in this week's presidential debates. Church, when we stand back and stand by the drug of me, when we tell another shut up so we can keep taking the drug of me, when we talk over and bully others so that we can keep taking the drug of me, and when we intentionally close our eyes to the hurts and pains of others to keep taking the drug of me, it harms all of us. Our world lives by the ethic, me and mine first, rather than love your neighbor as yourself, and yes, many times your neighbor is your enemy. And the ethic of we is greater than me. We are all sin sick and in need of the Spirit of God to shake us, to wake us, and to turn our worlds upside down so our homes and communities and institutions can see differently and dream differently. The presence and power of the Spirit of God at that first noisy, frightening, violent, awe-inspiring, spirit-filled Pentecost gave believers of every nation and race and culture and background and gender and place a vision of God that was greater than themselves. The presence and power of the Spirit of God also gave the Apostle Peter the power to get over himself his cowardly, fearful, violent self, and stand up and stand in the power of the Spirit to proclaim that God's communal vision to work through all believers. At that first Pentecost, the global community of believers were each injected with the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, seeing God's big vision together and dreaming God's big vision together and bearing witness to who God is and who God was and who God always will be together. And the diverse group of believers at that first Pentecost saw and dreamed surrounded by chaos and fear and confusion and sneering and accusations of drunkenness and blood and fire and smoke. It doesn't sound much different from our world today. There's bloodshed everywhere. There's chaos and confusion and fear everywhere. There's fires and smoke literally and figuratively everywhere. Church, what if the Spirit of God is working even in all this? What if the Spirit of God is transforming our definitions of community for God's glory? What if the Spirit of God is pushing us and challenging us to give up our addictions to me and walk in the spirit of we? What if the Spirit of God is calling us to remember that we is always greater than me? What if the Spirit of God is challenging us as the church to create bigger, bolder dreams and visions to shine Jesus' light in this dark world? You see on the altar, there are blankets. And they're the prayer blankets that I had mentioned last month um, that uh, Marilyn uh, McElroy had uh, been, I believe, injected by the Spirit of God to make. Uh, not just for those in this congregation who are going through difficult times, whether it's grieving or whether it's illness, but especially those in our community who are ravaged by grief. And so we put them on the altar this morning, and we're going to pray over them after uh, I give our message. But friends, she would not be able to do all of this work, and these blankets would not be on the altar today if she had not first shared the vision. She did not make all of these blankets by herself. Jim helped too. <laughs> And after she shared the vision with me and we shared the vision with you all last month, there are others who have come forward 
They did so either after that worship service or they have called or texted or contacted Marilyn because they want to help make prayer blankets too. Friends, the Spirit of God accomplished all of this through one person who shared a vision with us. That's how the Spirit of God works. Let's keep moving in the Spirit of God, dreaming bigger together, visioning bigger together, so the world sees we are drunk with the love of God and are transformed by God's Spirit too. I invite you now, before we celebrate Holy Communion together, if you would just stretch your hands towards these beautiful uh, prayer blankets. And I will lay my hands on this one because this particular one is going to go to, now is it a 16-year-old? Um, Jordan's 23. Yes. So it's going to go to her because she is going to be facing surgeries. Well, she had a brain aneurysm, mm -hmm. and she's going through that right now um, okay. up in Philly. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to pray God's comfort and healing for Jordan, but I'm also going to bless the rest of these blankets, too. So let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you for your people here, Lord. I thank you for the Spirit of God which whips through this place and in this community and in our minds, hearts, and spirits, Lord, in wonderful and confusing and amazing and fearful ways. God, turning our hearts and minds to you and asking the question, what does this mean? God, we bless these blankets right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would pour out your grace and your comfort on them, O Lord, so that those to whom they go, Lord, may feel your comfort as they struggle with grief, as they struggle with illness, and as they struggle with so many other life situations. We particularly pray, pray for this blanket that will go to Jordan, oh God, as she continues to heal from a brain aneurysm. God, pour out your healing grace and your comfort upon her so that she may feel your presence and know you are near. All of these things we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> You all received your, um, what I used to call, drive through communion cups. They're still called that, but you received your disposable communion cups. And so I invite you to place those in your hand because at some point in the worship service, and let, um, at some point in uh, the liturgy, I will let you know when that is. You will put your hand over the cup so that we can bless the elements together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Jesus showed us how to surrender a spirit of me for a spirit of we, the Spirit of God that comes on us all, people of every race, nation, and culture. Jesus commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth, and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so now I invite you to put the disposable communion cup in your hand and put your other hand over it as I bless the elements. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever, and all God's people said, Amen. And now I invite you to take the top off, take the wafer out. The body of Christ broken for us, taken eat, remembering Christ's sacrifice of love for us.
love of our Lord Jesus Christ, which has brought us here, be with us now as we go forth, remembering that God has called us to hold up. We is always greater than we over our own wants and needs. May God give us the grace and the strength.